All right, good morning. All right, we're going to go to uh, our church family prayer time. So if you want to... Oh, one more thing before we do that. It is uh, not a junior church day today. It is a Bible board day today. So if there's any young people here, I'm looking around the crowd. We're <laughs> looking like we're all a little bit maybe beyond that. But if there's anybody here I'm not seeing that is... Uh, fairly young or you'd like to keep yourself occupied, then uh, go ahead and grab a Bible board. I'll give you a second to do that. And uh, if not, we'll, we'll go into prayer time. All right. No takers. Okay. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this time to come together as a family, Lord, and just think of the, the needs beyond our, our own household, Lord, and, and to the needs of our church and the community around us, Lord. Um, today, we just start off thinking about Gord Pelton and and the Pelton family, Lord, and, and uh, as they mourn the loss of Betty, prepare for the funeral ahead, Lord. We just thank you for the, for the fellowship that we did enjoy with Betty, and, and, and just what a testimony of, of marriage, Lord, just to um, just be married that young and, and, and that long, Lord. What a, what a great testimony, Lord, and we just, again, pray that you would just bless Gord, sustain them through this time, Lord. And God, we think of Reva, just uh, still mourning the loss of her sister, Gail, Lord. She was a, not just a sister, but a close friend, Lord. We just pray that you would be with her and, and even Robin and the McCoy family. God, just still dealing with this loss. God, we think of um, Anna and Nathan. Uh, we think of Nathan's mom, Linda. God, with a, just a serious cancer diagnosis, Lord, just starting chemo tomorrow. Would you just please be with her, Lord? Just strengthen the family around her, Lord. May they just... Um, God be encouraged and 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 just help encourage Linda through this time, Lord. And just God, we just pray for um, just wisdom for the doctors. And God, we do pray for for just a, a strong, healthy outcome for her, Lord. God, we just now we think of the stronghold of addictions, Lord, that are just many are struggling with, Lord, just within our city, our families, possibly even our church, Lord. We just. Um, Think of things such as drugs, alcohol, hall, pornography, gambling. God, these things that can just have such a tight grip on people, Lord. We just ask that you would just bring freedom, Lord, to um, those suffering, Lord. And God, just minister to them. And just, again, we think of those caught up in things like domestic abuse, human trafficking, abortion. We think of other forms of violence and destructive behaviors that are going on in our our communities, Lord. God, we just pray that your word, God, would just offer deliverance and hope for people, Lord. And we just think of those ministries in our community that are just really on the front lines of these things, Lord. We think of Hope Pregnancy Center. We think of the Men's Street Ministries. We think of Safe Families Brant, uh, the Salvation Army, Lord. Lord, would you just empower, encourage, and, and just bring support to these ministries, Lord, to not only strengthen them, but God, we know they... Just the job gets bigger and bigger all the time, Lord. So just we pray that you would meet those needs. And even within our church, Lord, we also have a front line right out on our, our doorstep, Lord. And God, we just pray that you would just give us grace and wisdom, Lord, as, as we help to minister and meet the needs of those around us, Lord. And we often think that it takes uh, somebody with special skills, Lord, but God, if you place them in our path, Lord, then, then there's a calling here for us, Lord. So we just pray that you would just help us, Lord, to know how to meet those needs and, and just um, take up that work, Lord. And again, we think of the ministries of our church, Lord. We, we just pray that you would just empower those ministries, Lord, and we know that uh, whatever the ministry is, the, just the goal is, is salvation, discipleship, baptism, fellowship, and and. And service within our, our church here, Lord. So we just pray that you would just bless the ministries, bring the workers, whether sowers or harvesters, Lord God, and that as people here are led and called, whether today it's, it's somebody's being called to salvation, to baptism, to service, Lord, that may we just hear that call, Lord, and respond to it and just honor you, Lord, as we move to, to draw closer to your will, Lord. God, we think of Danielle Robideau, our Ministry of the Month, Lord. We just thank you for her work, Lord, in translating just many of these um, Christian works and into uh, French, Lord, for the French-Canadian population, Lord. We just know that 
God, sometimes we have such a wealth of just uh, overload sometimes it feels like of information, Lord, and then we know other cultures and languages just really struggle to, to have the abundance that, that we have, Lord. So we just pray that you would just um, bless her in her work, give her strength, Lord, and help the ministry as they seek to um, translate, God, the documents and, 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 and works and writings that, that would best minister to that population, Lord, that you would just, um, God, guide them and may all her work be just well used, well received, and seek to um, draw people to you, Lord, and, and build up the um, believers in Quebec, Lord. And again, Lord, we just pray now for today, Lord, as our service continues, Lord. Just give us spiritual discernment as we open your word. We look forward to um, just hearing about the men's street ministry, Lord. And again, God, just give us not just the ability to hear your word, God, but to apply your word, Lord. As your word says, be not just hearers, but doers. And we just pray that, that we would be faithful in that, Lord. And again, we just thank you for this time to just bring these requests to you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, do we have a scripture reader, or is that me? Pat Purdy. Pat Purdy. All right, Pat's coming up. Good morning. Our scripture this morning is Matthew 25, 34 to 40. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty, you gave me drink. I was a stranger, you welcomed me. I was naked, you clothed me. I was sick, you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them, Truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of my brothers, you did it to me. Okay, this morning I have uh, the, oppor the opportunity to introduce you to a man who has taken this passage of scripture very literally. Many of you have met our friend Roger before, but for those of you who haven't, Roger the is the founder of Men's Street Ministries, an organization he started coming up seven years ago in Hamilton and now is serving in Brantford as well. There's so much, believe me, I could say about Roger, <laughs> and the wonderful ministry we've been blessed to be a part of, but I'll let him do that. <laughs> he was worried what I was gonna say when I got up here. As his favorite sister, his words, I'm honored to welcome Roger to Shenstone today. I think we're gonna see a video before he comes up though.
Roger Boyd here from Man Street Ministry. We're here at the Brantford location. It's located on George Street and Darling Street. And uh, this is a spot that we stop on Mondays and Saturdays and Sundays. Uh, two different programs. Mondays, we're here for soup and sandwiches, holding and toiletries. And then Saturday and Sundays, we provide all that. Plus, we have a produce food share program. And uh, we're very blessed from Costco, Burlington, and Ancaster that are providing us with uh, meat, fruit, and vegetables. We get about, about 125 out here on Saturdays and Sundays. And we also share a message uh, about uh, Jesus Christ, how much he loved them, that he's with them, and that he understands, and uh, he just wants them to uh, follow him. And they really appreciate it. They really do. They'll come up to me and say, you know what, that really hit home today. The ministry is just more than just a cup of soup. It's about the gospel. We are looking forward to starting a church service here in Brantford on Tuesday evenings. I'm trying to get it started by April 1st at the YMCA. I'm trying to encourage them to come in and, and hear more about what Jesus has done for them. So I wanted to share with you about who actually comes to the food share program in Brantford that we have on Saturdays and Sundays. We have the folks that are living in tents and living on the street that are completely homeless. We have people that are on social assistance. We also have single moms. We also have uh, working families that come. You know, it's tough right now. The food prices are extremely high and so is rent. And people have to make some type of decisions. And, and, and I'm not just talking about the homeless. I'm talking about working families, working families today. You know, there's young kids out here. You know, when I see a, a child out on the street, it breaks my heart because I know that child has never made a decision in their life to put them in this situation. They're just here, a product of their environment. come to the wholesale club uh, in Brantford or the Hamilton one and I usually spend a good thousand uh, dollars on a weekly basis just getting supplies I can't believe the price of food right now it's over 30 percent increase of cost and we're just so grateful that there's a lot of organizations and groups that donate to us that we can you know have Jesus money and do what we're supposed to do with it and buy food for the homeless I want to thank Kenichi Bakery. For the last six years, they have donated bread to the ministry. At the beginning of the ministry, in its early stages, we used to pray for bread because, you know, it's expensive to buy, and especially the volume that we buy. And then uh, Kenichi came on board, and they give us bread and also pastries. Cobb's Bakery came aboard about four years ago, and it sounds like a lot, but remember, we're making 1,500 sandwiches a week. And we share the bread with uh, three other charitable organizations as well. So we're grateful. Thank you, Edie Smiths, for donating jam and sauce. That really helps us out with making our pasta meals and butter and jam sandwiches that we provide. Uh, that 
that we feel this is like our second church family. We've been here, and uh, the volunteers that have come uh, from this congregation uh, to serve in God's ministry is amazing. It's amazing. And uh, <clears throat> at the beginning, uh, the clicker. <laughs> Pastor, you want to just come up and do this? <laughs> Uh, so at the beginning, at the beginning, the ministry was all about the clothing and the soup. And you see, <clears throat> we wanted to, to want it to be more. And, uh, and we needed to use the soup and the clothing to build trust in the people that we wanted to help. As believers, uh, <clears throat> as believers, can, it can help make the world a difference. But is it really our main goal, being a believer? Uh, it's just to serve uh, clothing and soup. It's not. They say that if you help others to help themselves, God is pleased. And I believe he is. But to offer soup and soap without salvation, it is to, to leave off the most important subject, the bread of life of Jesus Christ. And if we only try to make the world a better place, but fail to share the good news with them all, we're, doing, we're, we're, making, we're making it a better world for them to go to hell. If we're not sharing the word of Christ. It's good to provide water wells for those who need water, but without offering the living water, it has no value beyond this life. Of course, it doesn't mean... We don't do good works. Jesus Christ calls us to help the hungry, the poor, the sick, and those in prison. Jesus said, as we just read earlier, I was hungry, and you, you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. And I was naked, and you clothed me. And I was sick, and you visit me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Matthew 25, 35, 36 but what they didn't realize was what they did for others was actually the same as doing it onto Christ. Matthew 25, 40. So even though it is good to help the poor and feed the hungry, unless we speak everlasting, sustained bread of life, they will die with a full stomach, but still not enter the kingdom. At early beginnings, uh, the picture on, on my left is uh, the back of my hatchback of my car <laughs> when we first started. You can see there's a pot of soup, and uh, there's a, another pot. There's a, a cooker, and it was full of uh, pasta. And uh, when I first started, my biggest issue of going around and feeding the homeless was not keeping the soup hot, but keeping it in the pot. And, <laughs> and uh, it was from uh, a guy that uh, uh, worked with my uh, wife. Uh, he, um, he was a blind guy, and uh, he reached out to me, and he asked me, so, Roger, how are you keeping the soup hot? And I, and I go, I don't have a problem keeping it hot because I give it out so fast. It's keeping it in the pot. And uh, he came up with the idea with putting in gator, uh, um, Gatorade containers uh, that they have on the sidelines. And, uh, you know, we've grown so much. We've grown so much. And that was our first, that was our first trailer uh, that we purchased. And uh, <coughs> this picture... You know, I was driving uh, into the city of Hamilton. That's going in off the 403, going into the city. And uh, not many people would say, boy, Hamilton looks so beautiful. <laughs> but that morning it did. That morning it did to me. And it, I don't know if, uh, you know, I just felt that God was speaking to me while I was driving. I don't recommend taking pictures while you're driving, but I did. <laughs> and, uh, you know, 
And I, I just look at that picture, you see. What I see in that picture is I see, you know, the horizon, the city, and then those clouds, they look like mountains. It, look, it was very beautiful. It was very beautiful. And um, I look at it, you know, just from a distance. Hamilton looks beautiful. But then when you take a closer look, it's not so beautiful. You know, these are somebody's children sleeping here. That's a life. That's a life. And, uh, and it's very difficult for us to understand this life because we're not in it. We're not in it. And it's very easy for me or anyone to judge that life. But as I was speaking uh, to Pastor Andrew this morning, there are ones that choose to sleep outside. It's hard to understand. It's hard to understand. But I'll tell you what I do understand, what Christ wants us to understand. Galatians 6.2, God wants us to help each other in times of struggle and sin. Scripture commands, the word is command. He commands it. Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill of the law of Christ. What does that mean? When you ask someone else to help to bear the burden, you're giving them the opportunity to serve God and share Christ's love with you. God knew that I was going to need help when I started this. <laughs> he did. More than I knew that I needed I just needed to stay out of his way. I just needed to stay out of the way and let others, let others be part of this ministry in every way possible. Not everybody can uh, go to the street. You know, Janet, my wife, she can't do that. She can't do that. Some can. Some can make peanut butter sandwiches. Some guys can wash dishes, eh, John, and, and, and work the street and do other things behind the scenes of the ministry. I, I, I believe that if I was obedient to Christ, if I was obedient to Christ, he would grow this ministry. Obedience. What does this Bible say about helping those in need? Hebrews 3, 16. And don't forget to do good and to share with others, for with such sacrifice, God is pleased. Luke 6, 30. Give everyone that who begs from you, from one who takes away your goods, don't demand them back. Meaning, Give with a godly heart. Don't expect anything in return. In Acts 20, 35, in everything I have shown you that by working hard, we must <clears throat> help the weak. In this way, we remember the Lord Jesus' words. It's more blessed to give than to receive. Good news, Jesus really said it best. Glory to be those who help others. And we have to be mindful of that. It's not just the homeless, but it's your neighbor. It's somebody that you know that is struggling. We need to help them in the, any possible way that we can. <clears throat> what does Jesus say is the most important thing? Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first greatest commandment. And the second is, is love your neighbor as yourself. And those are your neighbors. Those are your neighbors. 
Those are your neighbors. The thing with the ministry when I first started was that I didn't want it to be about the soup, the cup of hope, as my wife would call it. She says, my wife's favorite, or not her favorite line, her most famous line. So if a cup of hope looks like soup, then that's what it is. And, uh, but that was my biggest fear. I didn't want it to, to be a social gospel, my ministry. I didn't want it to be social gospel. Social gospel attracts a lot of people with lots of activities by doing things for others so they can feel good about themselves. This may explain why some churches tend to shy away of offering people and avoiding subjects, tough subjects, such as repentance, sin, hell, and confession. They're all good with collecting clothes. There's a lot of other people that help others uh, on the street by collecting clothes and giving food. But I didn't want that. I know that was a part of building a relationship and trust. But I wanted them to have something that they can have for forever, and that's Jesus Christ. That's Jesus Christ. <clears throat> you know, with these many churches and many Christians now, replace the true gospel with a real good feeling, man-centered message. Meology, I call it. Meology instead of theology. And one that focuses on things and not Christ. In this ministry, Man Street Ministry, we focus on Christ. You see, what I want to show you today is that the ones here you make me 400 sandwiches a week. And the ones here uh, help me wash pots and, and help me serve on the street. You see, God knows that I need help because I can't make 1,500 sandwiches and I can't do everything myself. So, what I'm here today is to tell you Thank you. Because I may be the front of this ministry, but I'm just the smallest part of this ministry. This ministry is as strong as the weakest link on this chain of this ministry. You see, if I didn't have the help and the people that um, provide to this ministry, this guy would not be going to heaven. And when I say that the ministry has led 89 men and women to Christ, that is because of all of you. Not me. Not me. All of us working together, working for God uh, to bring him glory. So how does the ministry do this? How do I get that girl that's sleeping in a snowbank at minus 30 degrees last winter, and how do I get that girl to come out of the garbage can at Hamilton to here? How do I do that? How do we do that? We do that through Jesus. That guy I met out of prison. He just came out of prison. And it took me four months to lead him to Christ. I, I first met him uh, a week before Christmas. And uh, it took me four months. God worked on him and I. Uh, to him to come to Christ, and he was the f 
Randy is the first um, street person that I led to Christ. When I first started, I only wanted to do one. I just wanted to lead one person to Christ. Just one. And, and then I led him to Christ. Then it was not enough. It wasn't enough. I'm like that spoiled kid. You get one chocolate bar, you want two chocolate bars, and, you know, and I've ate a few chocolate bars. And I tell you, I tell you, that's what the ministry is about. Saying cleanness is next to godliness is not from the Bible, but of course, there's nothing wrong of being clean. That is certainly a good thing. The Old Testament contains several laws that had to do with civil issues like waste disposal, quarantine, the sick, and the contagious, and proper washing. But the Old Testament focused on what? It wasn't about having a perfect society, but having their living in obedience, in obedience to God. That was the focus of the Old Testament being obedient to God. You know, I, when I think of obedience, there's one man that stands out far from all, and that was Noah. He was so obedient to God. God is more concerned with what is on the inside than the outside. Jesus said that is not... <clears throat> It is not what goes in your mouth that defiles the person, but it what comes out of their mouth defiles the person. Matthew 15, 11, Dietary laws are not what the kingdom is all about. So it's not what you eat defiles us, but what comes out of our mouth proceeds from the heart that defiles the person. Matthew 15, 18, Jesus gives us the perfect example. What comes out of our mouth says... That the tongue is a fiery world and our righteousness. The tongue is set among our members and staining the whole body, sitting on the fire of the entire course of life and sets on fire by hell. James 3, 6. It is good to be clean, but it is essential that we are clean inside. Inside with the Holy Spirit. This is a guy named Curtis. And right there, this, um, this picture I took is from a Catholic school in Winona on uh, St. Gabriel's. St. Gabriel's School. And that is on the front of their school. For with God, nothing is impossible. I took that picture, and I, I took that picture of that stone, and and I know that, but Curtis didn't. Curtis didn't. Curtis is a guy that did 18 years for manslaughter. And then one day he came to me, and he said, I need Jesus. And Curtis, you know, he was rough around the edges, and he, he had a lot of mental illness and a lot of brain damage, but God used him. God helped me to lead him, and then God showed him what real love was, and then God used him to grow Man Street Ministry. He was the one that helped me um, move along uh, with the street and going to the Y and, and helping others. You see, these sandwiches that you make help. In, in, in these ways of salvation. So every time you make a sandwich or you do something, they're salvation sandwiches. <laughs> they are. They are. Here's a guy named Dave. I led him to Christ. He, uh, he was brought by another homeless guy to my church service, and he says, Roger, I'm going to bring a friend next week, and he needs Jesus because his time is coming. He has stage four cancer. And uh, David had uh, three wishes. Uh, three wishes. One was to reunite. Uh, his wife passed away, and it destroyed his life. 
And uh, anyways, he, uh, three wishes was to re- reconnect with his sisters that he hasn't met in 40 years, okay? The other wish was to, uh, to reconnect with his stepchildren that he lost track of and take, and he wanted to go golfing. I said, well, I'm a golfer. I could do this. And I took him golfing, and sadly, the first hole, he collapsed in a sand trap. And I go, are you kidding me, God? I go, are you kidding me? <laughs> and I literally picked him up, dust him off, put him back in the golf cart, and put him in my truck, and I said, we're going to the hospital. And he says, I'd rather die. I'd rather die, Raj. I just want to go home now. And... Uh, I said, well, how about we go home to Tim Hortons and have a coffee and we'll work on your other two uh, wishes. And uh, unfortunately, um, we never got to meet his sisters again, but after he passed, shortly after the golf trip, uh, um, I reconnected with his kids. And, uh, you know, this is painted on a door downtown Hamilton, Thank you, God, uh, for speaking to Justin. You know, Justin, uh, just, they, he just comes. You know, I'm a fellow on the street. As I, I'm not pushy. I'm not a pushy. Uh, I don't push Jesus on you. I, I'm there for you. And, and, and the thing is, is with, with God is that God brings them to me, and I lead them to him. When they come to me, they are ready because the Holy Spirit is, is, is working in them. They're working in them. The first century, the church took uh, collections for the poor, primarily for Jerusalem Christians, and they, they suffered so much. Uh, by the time Apo- Apostle Peter wrote the second letter that many were, were starving to death, however, never did these collections take over presidents of the gospel. The gospel that says Jesus is our one and only hope of being saved. And this is the message that we give on the street. Acts 4.12, the early church focused on telling the lost that if they confess with their mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in their heart that God has raised him, Raised from the dead, you will be saved. That's Romans 10, 9. And that's on the back of my trailer. You know, the other day, it happens all the time. I'm pulling that trailer uh, constantly from Mount Pleasant to Burlington or to Hamilton. And I'm driving on the 403, and people will honk their horn and wave to me, give me the thumbs up. They're reading the back of my trailer. And, and I put that on the trailer because... Uh, a couple of reasons is that I was told to, by God, put that message on there. And then I was thinking, you know, how many people read that? And maybe they're just having a bad day, and that is their breaking point, and they read that, and it could change their lives forever. And I also use it uh, for ministering to men and women behind my trailer. I get them to read that. And, and, and confess. There's a, to confess our sins means that we agree with God about our sins. There are, <clears throat> the holy God in that offense can only be dealt with through the saving relationship with Jesus. To believe means more than just knowledge. <clears throat> it means that you can act upon your heart What Jesus said to Martha, he says to all, I am the resurrection and life. Whoever believes in me, though he dies, that shall live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? Matthew 11, 25, 6. We can help a person to receive some essential things in life, but if we fail to mention eternal life. Life is found only in Christ. It is only true work of Christ. Tragically, Jesus will say to many, not a few, but many, 
I never knew you. I never knew you. Depart from me. Your works of lawlessness, those works they did were useless if they don't mention Christ. It's very important. This ministry is all about Jesus. And it's all about these people that are so broken and so lost. And what I've learned is that uh, I've never seen Jesus so much. Or if I want to go see Jesus, I just go to the street. He walks amongst them as he walks amongst us. But there's just something about the broken and the lost that it's just uh, amazing, you know. <laughs> this guy here, it was so funny one day. He came to me, Darcy. He comes to me, and he was so excited. He comes to me. He says, Roger, I need a Bible and a prayer. And I go, okay. Usually they go, I want soup and I want a sandwich or I need a sleeping bag. But Darcy that day wanted a, a Bible and a prayer. And I go to him, what's up, Darcy? He, and it, and uh, he says, I've been clean for four days on my own, but I can't do it no more by myself. And I said, amen. I said, amen. I said, Darcy, you're one of the smart ones. You're one of the smart ones that realizes that you can't do it on your own because if you could, you've already done it. And he accepted Christ. And then on the next night, I was driving around. I saw him in, in Hamilton. And, uh, you know, Jesus let me show off a little bit. I wind down my window. I said to these new volunteers, or they actually, it was actually Pastor Bill from my church that came out that night. And I wind down my window, and I yelled at Darcy. He was, he, I don't know, he was on his way to somewhere. And I go, hey, Darcy, what do you know? And he says that Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. <laughs> Never forget that moment. And uh, Cassandra, yes, Cassandra, she's very, she was, <laughs> I led her to Christ. She just came to me uh, broken. But uh, I, I think there's another slide of her, and she was outside. Cassandra, I didn't realize that she was a missing person. She was a missing person, and I posted her on my Facebook page. And it was... Uh, CHCH News uh, did a, a story about, uh, about the ministry, about how I was, uh, I was talking about ha the city of Hamilton uh, putting out, uh, boarding up uh, this wall that prevented the homeless to get heat out of the building. And I took a picture of that, and the city of Hamilton, or CHCH did a story on it, and a mom watching the news saw her daughter, and then I was contacted. And uh, good news about Cassandra is that she lives on Rebecca Street in an apartment now, and uh, she's out of the cold. Okay? And, uh, she, and she has Jesus, and she has Jesus. Keith, Keith, have you noticed Keith? Uh, he doesn't have a hand. He has no ears. He's completely melted. He's my friend. Jesus listens to prayers. That man, I helped and helped and not realizing that he knew that I was helping because every time I helped him, he was completely intoxicated and passed out and in really bad shape. And one day I just broke down and I prayed over him. And I just said, God, I just want to know this guy's name. I just want to know him. And I want to help him, but I don't know how to help him. And I said to Jesus, I want to quit. I want to quit. Because I don't think I can do it anymore. 
I was really broken. I prayed over him. And then the next day I was going to go out was on a, a Saturday morning. And the first guy that came to me at my first stop was this guy, Keith. I didn't know his name. And I said to him, hey, how you doing, buddy? I was so excited that this guy's coming to me. He goes, I'm fine. And he, like, he's talking to me. And I said, you want a soup and a sandwich? He goes, no, I don't want anything from you. And I go, well, that's not how I work. I got to give you something. And he says, no, no, no. I said, you need a coat? He says, you give me this coat. I said, I did. I said, and he says, you always leave me soup and sandwiches. And I go, I do. What's your name? He says, my name is Keith. And then from that day forward, Keith and I built this beautiful relationship. And uh, one day, uh, when I was trying to do fundraising for my first trailer, uh, this organization wanted to give me a check for $2,500 towards it, but they wanted a picture of me and a homeless person in them. And that just didn't work out well for me. It just didn't, that's not what my ministry is about, to, uh, to use the homeless. So Keith knows me so well, he says, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you, Roger? It seems something's bothering you. I said, well, I got a situation. I got a little bit of a dog and pony show going on. And he goes, well, what's going on? They all get excited. And he, I said, well, this lady wants a picture of one of you guys holding the check and stuff. He says, and it's, I said, it's for the trailer. And Keith is the bravest person I ever known. He goes, let's do it. He goes, let's do it. And I said, are you sure? And he says, anything for you. Anything for me. And uh, he, he took that picture. And I just think of him, and he's clean, and he's off the street. Ah, he's, he's, he's fallen down a couple times, but he's back up. He's back up. And this, this is the amazing story. I fed the homeless in Calgary, Alberta, uh, for nine days, and uh, f by that, God um, reconnected these two. Uh, Bruce is the, the guy with the beard. He's, he has schizophrenia, and uh, that's his best friend since high school at Ancaster High. And by me feeding the homeless in Calgary, somebody saw some video footage of me and knew what I was doing, and it was Bruce's sister. They lost track of him. And I reconnected him to his whole family. His whole family. And uh, I introduced him to his family on Christmas Eve in my chapel. In my chapel. And uh, we baptize. You know, we don't, we don't have a, always a, a fancy tub. Sometimes it looks like a kiddie pool where I put 45-gallon barrels of water in my driveway for a week and warm them up <laughs> and then bring them to the street and we baptize. And uh, yeah, God is so good. And, and then there is, you know, another one that just came. Just, they just come to me when, when it's time, when it's time. And this is a, a picture of our, our church service. This is our, our church service. This is what it looks like. And you can see guys are, you know, got their Bibles open and everything. I, I, I know I'm, I'm out of time, but one good, one good story about the church service is that I wanted the, the homeless to memorize Bible verses. And I, I would reward them with a $10 Tim card. That was, the, that was the catch. If you could come up, I could care less if they missed three words or five words. It was just the effort taken the New Testament and taken it and reading it because I know the passage that they would be studying, they would be looking and maybe find something else. And it was just trying to build habit forming. <sighs> I'm impatient. God, I, if people that know me, know me, that know me well, they know that I don't have that fruit of the Spirit. I'm working on it. And Pastor McLean from New Testament Baptist Church, he, he was actually uh, speaking there. And uh, 
he just chuckles at me. And uh, I said, you know, Pastor, why won't they learn a Bible verse? Like, I can't understand why they're not trying. They're not trying. And then I prayed and I prayed about it. And God spoke to me. God spoke to me about this. It was, you know, I always say, uh, I do my best work when I'm sleeping because that's the only time where I'm still and calm and the Holy Spirit speaks to me. And Jesus spoke to me. He spoke to me. You know what he told me to tell these guys? He said, go to church on Thursday night and ask them, how many of you guys could tell me a dirty joke that you learned two years ago? Uh, I told Pastor McLean, I told Pastor McLean that. He goes, okay. <laughs> I said, but we're not going to get him to tell the joke. We're just going to ask them. And, and, and I said, you know what Jesus said? Jesus said, ask them how many can tell that joke and put their, just put your hand up. And, and these hands came up, and I told them, the reason why you can remember that is because that's where your heart is. That's what Jesus wanted me to tell them. Tell them, you remember that stuff because that's where your heart is. If your heart was with me, you would remember a Bible verse. So I told Pastor McLean, you know, we're having a little chit-chat. I'm driving the church. I'm all fired up. I said, I'm going to give it to them, Pastor. I'm going to lay it out to them. And when you know it, I go to the church, you know, getting set up. And this person, one of my church members, came up to me and says, I learned a Bible verse. <laughs> I go, you what? He goes, I memorized the Bible verse. Can I do it tonight? And I go, oh, uh, yeah. All right. I go, Pastor McLean, I need to talk to you. <laughs> and uh, I gave him the message, though. I said, Pastor says to me, what are you going to do? I said, Christ put it on my heart to give him that message. I'm just a delivery boy. I'm going to give it to them. And you know what I did? And then the next week, there was five of them that learned the Bible verse. And they came up. And it's been a consistent thing, you know? So that is what's happening at Man Street Ministry uh, today, you know, baptizing, uh, leading them to Christ, you know, 89 of them. Uh, Bruce at the top, uh, he used to work for me. He was an employee of mine. And... You know, I left that company and, and whatnot, and, you know, I went to Terry on, and uh, he was doing his thing, and the last time I saw him, I met, where the last time I, you know, reconnected with him was on the street. He lost his license, you know, addiction, you know. He showed up to church uh, this week. He has a full-time job. He drives cement truck. Uh, and he comes when he can to church. I, I led him to Christ, and I baptized him. And Ola is a good worker. And uh, Omar and Tracy, quick story with them, is that they have five kids, and during COVID, they couldn't make ends meet because their employers laid them off. They had enough money to pay their rent, or, you know, their rent and their bills, but no food. And the ministry kept them going. We kept them going. Uh, and then they made 60 meals uh, for the homeless uh, to, you know, bless the ministry and give thanks to Christ. And this is what we were looked like during, the, during COVID. I used to drive around with the lunches in the back of my, uh, uh, that's um a luggage rack carrier on the back of my truck, and that's how I did it, because right? nobody could go out with me because of COVID, but we fed the homeless. And you know what? All the other services closed. Salvation Army, mission services, they all closed. And uh, I'm so proud of our ministry that we continue to do. And I got this beautiful card uh, from the homeless, uh, Beth and the homeless community, Give me that card thanking me uh, for feeding them and not forgetting about them. 
Yeah. Well, that, that is the ministry today. And in closing, I would just like to close in a word of prayer. Bow our heads. Father God, thank you for, for your love and which is of the life of all of us. Thank you for preserving the lives of the homeless and you are a shelter and strong tower for those who need refuge. We thank you uh, for enduring the grace that covers those who can't take care of themselves. Father, we lift up to you mercy, the poverty, which is a moral, social wound upon our country and our, and our community. And your goodness helps us to heal the wound by working to remove the suffering and the pain of the poor. Please, Father, put, our, put your arms around our children and families in extreme poverty so they feel comfort and hope to meet their needs both physically and spiritually. And Lord, guide me so I can be more hands and feet pursuing justice for the poor and upholding the cause of the need of the needy. Father, prepare the hearts for that you <clears throat> for you that they see and walk and let them come to the ministry so I can lead them to you. Father, at times I don't understand their situations of mental illness and addiction and being homeless. Father, continue to be with me that I walk along the side of them to walk them to you. I pray this in your son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.